Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here, and if you're watching this video, I strongly recommend you to, before you do, to watch my final set of Splatoon, which is live right now on DSP Gaming, or at least it should be. I uploaded it the same time I uploaded this video, so hopefully it has gone live before this video ever went live, but yeah. Today, after three months away, it was late May when Splatoon was released uh, in 2015. Today is August 20th, so three months later. I decided to check out Splatoon on the Wii U for one final session, just like I said I would a few months back. Now, you might say, why would you go back to Splatoon after this hiatus? Well, Splatoon, at launch, was a game highly criticized for not being a full-fledged game. And what I mean by that is, it had very limited content at launch. It only had a certain set of maps, which a lot of people say that's nowhere near enough maps for a launch of a game. It only had two separate game modes, didn't have a lot of weapons, didn't have a lot of equipment, and it had a campaign that was very short-lived, maybe like four hours long. So a lot of people were saying, how can you sell this as a $60 retail game regardless of the fact that it's a first party nintendo game when it has so little so little content and so nintendo announced oh no don't listen we're selling it now in may but we're going to be giving you free new expansions and content over the next several months every every week or so there should be new maps new weapons new game modes and so you know give it say around three months and by the end of august you'll have a ton of new content okay that's why i played it today because i really wanted to dive back into splatoon headfirst and understand what is this new content that was added, and uh, tell you, you know, now, <clears throat> kind of firsthand, after experiencing this new content, after giving it a three month wait, uh, do I think that the game is a, you know, any better than it was back in May? Okay. Now, undoubtedly, I'm going to tell you, of course, it is better than it was back in May, simply because there's more stuff, there's more weapons, there's more game modes, there's more maps. So, of course, yes, intrinsically, there's going to be more value to the game when it has more content. Duh. Okay, but you may be saying to yourself, all right, back in May when you reviewed the game, you said don't buy it. You said wait and then see in August if it's worth a buy. So let me tell you what I experienced today when I was playing the game. First of all, the Wii U annoyed me because the Wii U doesn't always prompt you to do updates for these games when you're like other consoles, right? Any other console, if there's an update, it'll tell you before you boot the game. I actually got into Splatoon today, and as I was in the game, and then when I went to play online, then it said, oh, now there's a Splatoon and a console update you need to do. That was really annoying, but I digress. After doing all of these numerous updates I needed to do, I realized there was probably about 10 weapons unlocked in the store that I had not had back in May. And then there was like another additional dozen weapons that I couldn't get yet because I wasn't high enough level. So yeah, number one, the biggest, one of the biggest changes, the level cap has been massively increased. I think it was what, level 10 or 11 or something like that way back in uh, <clears throat> in May, now it's been raised up to above 30. I, the highest person I saw today was level 33, so I have to think that maybe it's like 35 or 40, maybe the level cap. Now, I don't know if there's any equipment uh, that you need to be high enough level to play as uh, right now. Again, Nintendo claims they may add more stuff in the future. Maybe they'll add higher level stuff, but I don't really know necessarily if raising the level cap actually added anything to the game if anything it seems like more of a nintendo trying to give people an incentive to keep playing the game because you want oh there's new gear but you can only get it if you're a higher level but it's still the same game you're just forcing me to play it more to get the new equipment rather than just play it, the new equipment right now see what i mean it kind of is an artificial way to get you to play more um and the weapons i have to say this one of the major improvements that i'm seeing right now that that way different from what i saw back in may People are using a lot of different weapons because there's so many new weapons now. There's a paintbrush that's kind of like a roller, but also a, a, a better melee weapon. There's way more guns. There's like a bazooka style gun. There's a shotgun style gun. There seem to be a lot of variations on the weapons now over the, the course of this last several months that they've added all these new guns. And I can tell you this, even though, yeah, there were people who were dominating with the roller and the paintbrush, it wasn't like it was in May where every match I joined, everyone's using the same weapons and they're all overpowering and dominating everyone. No, in this case, there was a wide variety of weapons being used and it was a lot of fun. It was more variety of gameplay because it wasn't always, oh, the guy with the roller insta-kills me or whatever. That was good. So I think that's a good thing. They added so many weapons, there's so much variety now. Everyone's using a different weapon and kind of match mastering a different weapon and a different gameplay style, so that was pretty good. <clears throat> so I had opportunity to play on maybe two or three maps that previously I wasn't able to play on. Two of them already had been released in the past three months, and one, incidentally, was actually released tonight. 
So it was like I was playing two matches, and then oh, there was an update, and a new map was released, and that was really cool. I think it was like called Flounder Heights or something like that, and it simulates apartment buildings. And what I've noticed is that the stages now are drastically different between when you're playing a regular match and ranked match, because what they've done is they've redesigned the stages to basically kind of cater to the, whatever style of gameplay. So the regular matches is kind of, okay, just cover everything with paint. It's a standard map. The ranked matches now really have had the maps changed around a little bit. Uh, the Floundering Heights in particular had two completely different map setups for the two different game modes, which was good and refreshing. I liked that rather than it's the same map and we just changed the objective. No, it was actually the maps varied a little bit, which was pretty nice. And uh, I also played a new game mode tonight called Rainmaker, which apparently is a variation on the capture the flag mode of other third-person shooter style games where everyone's rushing to the center of the map to get this Rainmaker gun. Once you get the gun, you move very slow, but you can charge it up into a super-powered tornado blast that insta-kills anyone who gets in its way. And your goal is to take that gun to the other enemy's uh, base, and there's like a big, it almost looks like an ant hill that I guess you need to super supercharge a shot into to instantly win the game. If you can't get the shot into it, uh, then the goal is to at least get it as close to that as possible, and by the end of the time limit, if you got it closer to their goal than the other team did to your goal, you win. Uh, there's some variations on it, too, where if you shoot this Rainmaker gun when it's downed on the ground, it'll explode and it'll kill anything of the opposing force if you hit it with enough of your bullets. So there's some cool variations and things in the Rainmaker mode that I like that make it a little bit more unique than just a standard capture the flag mode. And I really enjoyed it, and of course I played the standard... Uh, <clears throat> ranked mode, which is the, you know, you capture the territories, I forget what they call it in this game, but you're capturing the territories, and I played the standard ranked matches mode, or, uh, regular matches mode, where it just cover everything in paint, so, I played three modes, here's the thing, though, and here, I'm gonna be honest with everyone, uh, I don't know if there's more modes, in fact, I'd go out on my way and probably say, yeah, there probably are more modes in the game that I didn't experience, and I'm not going to experience them, and it's not my fault, it's the fault of the game. Because here we are three months later after launch, Splatoon still forces you to only play what the game decides is this, you know, this four-hour rotations game map. So maps and modes all still rotate in what, three or four-hour increments. I think it's four-hour increments. And you're forced to only play on certain maps when you're playing. So if you're playing Ranked Match, you're going to play on Floundering Heights and uh, the Mall stage, and that's it for four hours. You're stuck. You have to go between those two, and you can't, you know what I mean? Why? Please, someone, on someone tell me of another shooter game that's primarily multiplayer, meant to be multiplayer-focused, that you can't pick what game mode you want to play whenever you want to play it. There's no matchmaking for it. You're just forced to play whatever the game tells you for four hours. It's ludicrous. It's preposterous. And again, I hate to say it, it's done, in my opinion, to pad the game. To make you feel like, oh, there's more content than there is. Because for four hours, you're stuck playing the same shit. When, in reality, everyone might actually just like one mode and only want to play one mode. But because they force you to play certain modes, oh, well, now there's more longevity to the game and yada, yada, yada. Okay? Now, apparently, from what I'm to understand, <clears throat> there is, yes, a private match mode enabled now. You can make a private match if you like, and yes, you can actually select your map, you can select the game mode. Problem, apparently it's only for your friends. I went into it today, and it looked like you could only do it with people on your friends list. So unless you have eight friends, or ten friends, or however many they allow you, who are all ready to play Splatoon at once, how could you ever make a legit private match in this game? What you're supposed to be able to do, in any game that's multiplayer focused, you make your lobby, you make your game mode, map, rules, and then you launch it and people can join. And apparently that's not the case in Splatoon. You have to only invite people who are on your friends list to even do a private match. So then it's not really the spirit of matchmaking at all. It's actually, once again, limiting the content of the game so that you have to have multiple friends to do what you want or else you have to wait the four hours in the queue. So in some ways, I could tell you, it seems to me Splatoon is a better game. There's more weapons, right? There's more variety of gameplay, great. More maps, great. You know, these things no one would complain about, and the fact that there's not one dominating weapon right now is, in my opinion, a big plus from what we saw back in May. But, you still cannot play what you want when you want. You still take an incredible amount of time to go through and see all the content that the game has to offer in multiplayer because of that stupid four-hour limitation. And the level caps to buy certain equipment are incredibly annoying, and again, only there to pad the game. The bottom line is this, ladies and gentlemen. Splatoon. 
Hold on, because I actually wanted to have the box for me. I, don't, I didn't have it. Hold on. Here it is. The bottom line is, Splatoon is Nintendo's attempt to jump on the multiplayer-only or multiplayer-focused bandwagon that we've seen with games for the past year or so. Some games have excelled at it. Some games have flopped miserably at it. Splatoon kind of lands... So I'm getting attacked on my headphones. Somewhere in the middle. It's not a terrible game at all. It's actually quite fun. When you're playing Splatoon, you're like, wow, I'm caught up and I'm really enjoying the gameplay and this is great. But then, once you realize you're stuck playing that same exact effing gameplay for four hours, you're kind of like, ugh. Why? Why didn't they do the standard things that all other, you know, multiplayer-focused shooter games do? Why are they limiting me? And it, it becomes a huge shortcoming. The game is still $60. It's a first-party Nintendo game. Don't expect Splatoon to sell for less than $60. Or, excuse me, in some places it might be $50. I think I paid $60. Uh, don't expect it to be cheaper than that anytime soon. Because the bottom line is it's a first-party Nintendo game, and these first-party games almost never go down in price. Seriously, look at two three-year-old first-party Nintendo games. They still sell for full price because they're first-party, and Nintendo kind of holds it, you know what I mean? Like, holds it as this is the only good thing for our console, so it's got to be the, the full price. And do you want to spend $60 for a game that you're going to get bored of if you play it all the time because you're, or, or you're going to get frustrated at the limitation of the four-hour thing? And... It's ultimately up to you, okay? Ultimately, it is up to you. I'm happy I played it. Let me put it that way. I'm happy I played it. It's a nice experiment for Nintendo to see if they could do something different. But this certainly, in my opinion, Splatoon does not hold up to the quality level of any of the other first-party Nintendo games I've played on Wii U. I mean, Mario Kart, Super Mario 3D World, uh, you know, Do the Donkey Kong... Any of the first-party games, Pikmin 3, that I've played on the Wii U, in my opinion, are better than Splatoon. Because Splatoon is just a little addictive shooter, doesn't do too much creative, quite honestly. It's a lot of variations on other game modes you've played in other shooter games before. And it has a ridiculous limitation with leveling caps, level requirements to buy items, and this four-hour stupid mechanic of switching between maps to pad the game. No. Even now in August... This game is still not worth $60. This is probably, in my opinion, honest opinion, $30, maybe $40 this game is worth. This game is not worth full retail price, which it's still sold for. It still has too many flaws. The first thing Nintendo should have done was taken feedback from the, from the fans. The fans would have said, we don't want to wait four hours to rotate between maps. We just want to pick what we want and play it. And immediately they should have done it. Instead, three months later, well, we'll just keep giving you... Uh, you know, we'll keep giving you more content. That's nice, but that's not what I want. It's great that you gave me more content. I still want the ability to play the content when I want. Just think about it this way. You come home <clears throat> from school or work or whatever. I have an hour and a half to play games at night. I want to play Splatoon. Guess what? Tonight's rotation, you're stuck with the same maps you've played three times this week already. And you're like, what the fuck? I want to play the things I haven't played before. I paid the money. Give me the content. Don't time lock the content. So the biggest flaw still exists in Splatoon. So, if you are a hardcore Nintendo fanboy, yes, buy Splatoon. The campaign is short, but it's fun, and the online is going to be fun, and you'll be, you'll be annoyed, but you'll probably get addicted, and especially if you're a Nintendo fanboy, you want to play everything. Yeah, the game is quality. It's not a bad game. It's just not as good as other shooters already available for every other console under the sun. It's kind of an excuse, oh, well, this is the only one for Wii U. Well, yeah, because you don't have third-party support. Any other shooter you're going to play on another console is pretty much better than Splatoon, and that's sad, because again, first party, you think Nintendo would do something like amazingly different, and in this case, it's a case where no, they took a shooter formula from other games, they kind of put it together, they put time locks and limitations to say that there's replayability when really there's not that much, and honestly, the game is not very good in comparison to other shooters. Splatoon is a decent game, it is not worth 60 bucks. I cannot recommend it. I would not tell anyone to go out and spend $60 on Splatoon, even now with all the new content. Save your money, especially it's the hardcore gaming season right around the corner. You're going to have tons of shooters coming out, trust me. You know, every year you get a Rainbow Six and Call of Duty and Halo. You're going to have three, four big high-profile shooters coming out in the next few months. Don't waste your money on this. 
if you have another console that can play one of those, because you know those games will have the matchmaking. You'll be able to do whatever you want. You'll be able to create a lobby without only inviting friends. All the limitations of this game will be solved by those games, and there's no reason to spend the money. And I hate to say it. This was a game that people spent 60 bucks on in May because they were all Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. They played it all summer, right? And now it's going to be forgotten. In another month or two, no one's ever going to mention Splatoon again. It's going to be a little footnote in the annals of Nintendo history, a little thing that they tried. And yeah, it sold because it was a Nintendo first party game and that's the only thing people buy for the Wii U because it's all that's available. So of course it sold. But... It's not going to make any kind of an impact. In a year's time, no one's going to give a shit about Splatoon. No one's going to work. Just like all those other ones. Titanfall? What the fuck's Titanfall? Same thing. You're not going to care about this game in just a couple months, and it's going to fade into obscurity. Splatoon was a nice experiment, but because of flawed game design and padding of the amount of content that was in the game through limitations, the game's not very good, and I can't recommend the buy unless you are one of the most hardcore Nintendo fanboys and want to have every game Nintendo's ever made. Fine. If not, skip it and get something else later this season because there's going to be great games coming out regardless. All right. That's my second look at Splatoon. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, the new content of Splatoon that I made today. And I'll see you later. And of course, I'll see you for all the new games coming out during this crazy gaming season of 2015. Peace out, everybody.